I started, thank you for coming to the Price of Admission interview nook uh, mm -hmm. of our studio. Um, and you are the filmmakers of Minutemen. Uh, do you want to tell us a little bit about the film? Uh, um, kind of in a nutshell, the Minutemen is a documentary about um, citizens on the border, U.S.-Mexico border, that have uh, kind of taken upon themselves to um, stop illegal immigration. In the film, there's about, what, um, seven, eight characters? Seven, eight characters that we followed over a course of four years. Um, and we just, that's, you know, this their story. What was, uh, wh when was the first indication that this is something like you really had to film, like you had to get here and, and shoot this and show it to people? Um, I think just the importance of it all. I, at first, it, there was, it was an issue. I mean, immigration has been an issue for many years. Uh, but I think once I started, f maybe a good year into filming that I actually grasped the, like, the weight of it all, of how, like, this is going to, like, strike a chord in in everybody, um, practically, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So that's kind of, you know, about, about a year into it, the, the, it really kind of came down to, like, this is very, like, this is a very important part of history right now, and it needs to be told, you know, correctly. Did you intend to film for as long as you did? Because it's over the course of, like, three or four years, right? Yeah, yeah, from start to finish, about four years. Um, yeah, we, we didn't, you know, we didn't, we didn't, the thing is, because it's a, it, because of the, the nature of the documentary, you know, you we could either wait until there was an ending to the issue, which was obviously we're there right now. There's mm -hmm. no ending still, this is true. and so we had to wait until we had uh, an ending for our characters because that's what was important in our film was the characters that are within this issue. So we waited until they had uh, a closure in their life, and, and that came when it came three and a half years into the film. The um, American flag is really um, featured prominently in the movie. Um, that's something that we noticed. Is that more something that sprang up naturally because it was there, like with everybody, or was it more of a, something you wanted to put in initially? It's it's fu it's one of those funny things that like you know you, uh, you're out there in this desert and there's just whatever people bring with them out there, and it just happened to be that maybe three or four characters had American flag baseball hats. You know, there's Little Dog where his symbolic thing was to have you know. It, well, he started with a smaller flag on the on the edge of the border, <laughs> and then the, over time it, it evolved. He built a pole. He built a pole, and then he had a 30-foot flag or yeah. a 25-foot flag, and then that got bigger and bigger. Right. And, um, and then it, g it came to the point where the Border Patrol agents, like in the helicopter, would, like, signal to him, like, do their, like, flashers mm -hmm. or do their, like, hon the yeah. honk or something, you know what I mean? And then that got him really excited. So, oh, yeah. So the, the, the flag kind of became yeah. um, I, like, little the He's so patriotic mm -hmm. that he even had a, uh, uh, a U.S. Postal Service express envelope in his window that has the American Eagle on it. Now, obviously, as, as documentary filmmakers, it's your job to sort of be objective. But was there any point where you just found yourself, like, behind the camera, really struggling with that, like, your own personal uh, political beliefs as opposed to those who you're filming? Sure, absolutely. Um, I think it was... I think it was a sign that we we're doing something right. You know what I mean? It was a good sign that we we're on the right path when you're when you're kind of presented with those challenges. Um, on, I mean, on few on few occasions, you know, it's difficult to film sometimes when they're doing certain parts, of, you know, during the, during the film, and you don't necessarily agree completely. But you know, you're gonna you just need to keep rolling. Is that something that occurred when you were uh, filming Minute Mom, and I believe it was. Um Jeffe, Jeff, going into yeah, the Hefe, migrant yeah. houses. Yeah, that was definitely one of the spots where, you know, I kind of wanted to say, hey, this is, you know, you may not want to do this. Like, you guys, because, you know, you, they get so excited mm -hmm. and they don't, you know, step back to think about their, you know, their, 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 their actions. So, you know, and you're kind of there just following them around. So you're obviously kind of out of it. You're, you got to, you know, you're separating yourself with the camera so you can think a little bit more objectively than they obviously are. Have any of them seen the film yet? No. Are you excited for them? To I'm very excited. Uh, Little Dog, the uh, the you know the mm -hmm. our hero, you know our our hero, our heroine in the in the in the film, he's coming in this evening. Oh, exciting! And um, he's going to be um, there for the screening. His, oh, you know, well, it's going to be the first time he sees it. It's going to be his first time. Yeah, we're very excited. I think he's going to love it. Um, can you take us uh, into like the whole warrant situation? Was that something that like? You had been filming, and then this thing just sort of popped up. You're like, "Oh my God, that's amazing!" Or because um, it looked like in the broadcast that was some of the footage you had shot, like being shown on like the news broadcast. Was that something that 
Yeah, I mean, that just kind of um, came about just, you know, where you just cover your subjects, you know, you just, you're there when they're doing things and it's the kind of progression of the story and that's where their story went to get, you know, pop for, you know, you know, trespassing and whatnot. Now, since you guys were with them, were you worried about getting in trouble too because you were there when they were going into the houses as well? Yeah, I mean, that was definitely a I concern. Mean, I, I, I don't, yeah, I mean, uh, I mean, you were there that day, so I, I don't know if you, but that kind of goes back to what you're talking about, that, you know, being being comfortable with a situation and going into it and, and documenting and, and stuff. I mean, like, you know, going into this migrant camp was definitely uh, uh, something that they were very comfortable with. Um, but being there to film it, you know, we, we, we did shoot something. We did shoot something that, that uh, a lot of these news broadcasts and stuff don't actually have. It can be seen at times as incriminating, but it's, it's definitely telling the story of their angst and what they actually did, to what extent, you know, they went in there. And definitely they're, they're this cross-cultural boundary where they're going into other people's houses and their things. And, you know, mm. having, being so separated, even though their house is down the block, you know, it's... That's really a bizarre thing, especially about Minimum, which mm. what makes her such a unique character. So when they actually got caught for all this stuff, they w they never never even spoke with us about it. I mean, no, even though, no, you know, technically yeah. Corey could have been trespassing, but yeah, I mean, I th yeah, I mean, there that was definitely a worry, and it just never came around. I mean, we we're we we're prepared to with a, like a with like a court order to give up tapes. Um, but, I mean, the day started off, you know, they didn't go into the camps thinking that they're going to, you know, go through people's belongings and, or whatnot. The day started out with them doing, like, kind of a sting operation for this prostitution little place. That they, I, mean, I mean, it was clearly, I mean, there's a lot of, you know, there's a lot of condoms and a lot of uh, shady stuff yeah. going on in that little grove there. And from the grove, we kind of ventured into the, you know, into the canyon a little further where they have, you know, their homes and... You know that stuff. Were they probably the two most um, I don't, compelling in a sense that, like, it was very difficult to sit back and just film without wanting to say something? Like when they were at the Home Depot, for, I don't want to say harassing, but using their First Amendment in a way that most of us may not use it. Um, with the with the workers outside the Home Depot, was it very difficult not to say anything and like go out and film everybody? Well, we're, we're both you know photojournalists, so mm -hmm. our our big thing in our background and you know, schooling and stuff is just to to be a fly on the wall and really to just not be involved in the situation directly and not, not control it and, and not step in. That's what allowed us to make a film that is, you know, we're, we're a couple steps away from everything that's going on. We're an observer rather than being like uh, trying to push a point or anything. So being at the Home Depot scene, we, if we had been involved with the Minutemen, we may not have been able to speak with uh, the migrant worker that we talked to, but being able to cover the whole situation but still, I guess, in a sense, be embedded with the Minutemen um, was, was a, a special aspect of um, What would you say, like, the... Because uh, obviously there's uh, a huge difference between hearing about what goes on at the border and not just in the, oh, Minutemen versus illegal immigrants, but also just that dangerous, shady culture that gets created on the border. Is there? Do you feel that there was really this big difference between hear about, hearing about it and then actually seeing like these prostitution dens or drug smugglers and that kind of thing. Absolutely. I, the, I mean, the border is like a complete no man's land. So there's half a, you know, quarter to a half a mile, like, you know, both ways. It's kind of like just a no man's land. You know, they have, you have, you know, old ranchers living there or whatever, but it's kind of anything goes. No one kind of controls it. Ex you know, the border patrols do their best. You know, the only real control that that place has is the drug cartels. Oh, wow. You know, so they, they're they the controllers of that land. They know the ins and outs of every canyon. You know what I mean? They, you know, they, since they were, you know, 14, 15, they were running through there. You know what I mean? They know every little inch of that place. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's, a, and it's, def it's a scary place. If you're there, you know, you can, you know, I mean, there's constantly... Border Patrol agents being shot, you know, being shot at, just traveling along, shooting or whatever like that at night, and you can, you know, cross into like a drug deal and they'll just open fire. And wow. It's it's totally scary, like scary place. And a little dog actually got um, a few months after that, he actually got a uh, someone was sniping him. Like yeah, yeah, he was uh, he had a uh, like a big huge um, 
telescope like or telescope or binoculars on his like on his yeah. on his truck, mm -hmm. and someone with like a very high power rifle with mm -hmm. a scope shot like shot the scope oh, off God. the truck, you know, and hit the truck, and you can obviously uh, a bullet, you know. Because there seems to be a sense that like the Minutemen. Um, they, they're obviously doing something in their minds that is incredibly patriotic, but they have to be, be within the, the bounds of the law, you know what I mean? But on the other side, like they were talking about how Little Dog had those booties left by where he was, haha, we made you move, mm -hmm. that kind of thing. So that must be the, the, the hardest thing for them. Have they talked to you about how hard it is not to maybe go into the gray areas of the law for, for their own purposes too? I think it's, I think it's very tough, especially for Little Dog, cause, uh, because he's alone out there and you feel it you don't feel it when you get there, but you feel it when the sun goes down, mm -hmm. and it's very, very quiet, and it's it's very eerie because you've seen people crossing and stuff during the day, and uh, I, I think that it's just uh, uh, there's a sense of paranoia that's to an extent, you know. Well, rightfully uh, so. You know, especially you, when they're finding like decapitated <coughs> bodies, like yeah. you know, just yards away from on the other side of the fence. You know what I mean? So it's, and how easy would it be to, for like a you know cartel member to sneak across the border and, you know, take them out, mm -hmm. you know. But they, you know, surprisingly they haven't done that because it would start like a international incident, right? Absolutely. And, and the point, that, the, the place that he is picked out, Patriot Point, is uh, uh, really very, very close to the highway. To one of the, it's one of the only spots in that sector where the highway comes as close as it does to the border where, I mean, it really is no more than I'd say uh, hop, skip, uh, and a jump. Hop, skip, and a jump, like 400 yards, you know, uh, which is yeah. nothing to get to the other side. And he is in between that on his post. Um, so there's definitely, and, and you know, you see at some points in the film when he's taunted by smugglers and stuff. It's it's all very real. I did want to talk maybe a little bit more about um, uh, the Max Kennedy mm. uh, fellow and actually getting. Did you decide which minute man? Did you interview them all? Say, okay, we definitely have to talk to him. We have to talk to him. Or was it? Were these the people that came forward and said, "Oh yeah, film me, please." Uh, well, we we started off with like thirteen f to 13 fifteen 14, yeah. characters, and Mad Max was one of the one of the ones that was a little more standoffish. Mm -hmm. he, he he was when he had his opinion, he was probably fun to listen to. But yeah. when when uh, I think Corey really had to work to get his his favor over time. He opened up at night when there was no light. Oh. You know what I mean? Yeah. So you can't, you know, you can only record audio, but that just, you know, you can't really do anything with that. It took a, I don't know, maybe a good, just a, a year or something before we actually wrapped and, you know, made the final cut that he actually opened up to us and on a true level, you know, then just kind of superficial. I think maybe he started, you know, I think the trust was finally there. He's completely different than any other Minutemen out there, mm -hmm. and that's kind of the same thing goes for Little Dog. He's a bit different than a lot of the other Minutemen, you know. But they all kind of combine. They kind of they kind of round out the the uh, a representation of of the rest of the country. You know, having him and having Dick Buck. He's very Texas Southern, mm -hmm. and then having uh, um, Little Dog and uh, is. I guess he's California. I don't know where he's from, but he's, <laughs> he's from California. But he hits you know. the fisherman demographic. Yeah, he hits yeah. the fisherman demographic. And then we have, you know, Gadget Man, some smaller characters that really uh, uh, are in tune with with different parts of society, right. re representative. That was, that was really interesting too. Is that like y you see it, and then like they're kind of doing the like, especially with with Minute Mom and and Jeff, they were doing these really kind of harsh mm. things. But then you see other people that are saying, well, they're just coming here for life. They're scared, you know, crapless. You know, so it's not necessarily a we hate them thing, it's a we have to do this kind of thing. Yeah. I think a lot of times it's, they do get coined as the bad people. Mm -hmm. And, you know, every once in a while there's a Minuteman that goes, flies off the handle, you know, and uh, kind of ruins it for everyone else. But, you know, they're, I think they get a bad rap, you know, and I hope that the film shows that, that there's more to them than like a soundbite, like a, you know. CNN soundbite. I think uh, Ross had one last question for you. Um, we're, this is, I'm going to give you two words, and I want you to pick which one you feel most accurately represents uh, Freckles, uh, Little Dogs, because he just had this such this energy. But uh, so you have two choices. You can either describe him as awesome. Her. 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 Oh, her. Her. Right. her. A whole new level. Of the you mm -hmm. can describe her as awesome or more awesome. 